Greetings and welcome to Intech Insulation Technology Corporation in Denver, Colorado, and I'm Bill Jewell. Today I want to talk a little bit about how the remote on your Force 2 works. It starts with a transformer that converts 110 volts or 120, whatever's coming out of the wall. It comes right off the contactor where the power wires come into this on 2T1 and 4T2. So it takes 120 volts into the uh, transformer. It transforms that into 24 volts AC that comes out. We run that to the remote because it's safer to run a lower voltage and a lower amperage. One of the power wires from the uh, transformer goes to contact A2 on your contactor with the loop to the other contactor to the same spot. When the machine is plugged in and ready to go, this transformer is automatically heated up and applies power to both sides here. Now, once we get power through the remote and back to it, it will then pull the contactors in and will send uh, 110 volts to either your blower motor in this case or the agitator motor on that case. So how does this work? The other power leg from your transformer goes out to the remote that I represent by this first switch. I have it coming in here. When the switch is turned on, it sends power across to the other one out through here, which this switch represents the one on the control panel. So it then, when this switch is turned on, it then comes back in and goes to your blower contactor. When you put 24 volts right there and here, it pulls it in and sends power across. Now, how does the agitator one work? The agitator bleeds power to run the contactor from the blower switch. So the blower switch has to be on to power up the other switch on the remote that then allows electricity to go through and go into your contactor. Um, troubleshooting on these things. Uh, transformers are pretty reliable, but you should always have 24 volts AC when it's plugged in at the end of the two output wires that are usually orange. Uh, breaks in the wire going out to the remote will cause an issue. Uh, bad switches can cause an issue. You can ohms check these wires with your meter uh, to see if there's good continuity. You can ohms check the switches to see if you have good continuity here. The last thing that I would suspect is an issue would be the contactor. The ultimate test for a contactor would be to put 24 volts from both wires to the contactor directly and see does it pull in. If it pulls in good and solid and has a good ohms check across, it's good. If it vibrates in there, it's always bad, or if it's smoking or burnt smelling, it's probably also bad. If you've got any questions about that remote, about how it works or how to troubleshoot yours, call me here at the plant in Denver. I'm Bill Jewell at 303-833-6644 if you're local and 800-666-1611 if you're out of state. Dial extension 107, I'll help you out. Have a great day. Goodbye.